Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy August. Like this year's just flying by. A couple more things. Um, my name is Ashley. I write about food and recipes at Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. You can find me online at bigflavorstinykitchen.com, on social media at Big Flavors, and then on Twitter it's at Big Flavors Blog. And today I'm going to show you how to make a spicy salmon poke bowl. Um, and I keep wanting to, I've been playing Pokemon and Pokemon Go with my son, so I keep wanting to call it a poke bowl. Poke, and I've, it sounds wrong. Pretty sure it's poke bowl. Either way, it's delicious. And um, basically, if you're not familiar with it, it's a marinated raw fish dish that you serve over rice, kind of like a burrito bowl, but hi, Rob. It's kind of like a burrito bowl, except you have, it's a Hawaiian dish, so it's like fish, and then you have some fresh veggies, and you can really customize it with whatever you want. I did um, get a couple of people asking, if they don't like raw fish, can you do cooked fish or something else? You absolutely can. You could do, um, you could just like pan sear some salmon or you could use, you know, anything, any kind of, um, it would be good on there, uh, warm, but any kind of meat that you wouldn't mind having cold, like maybe a grilled marinated, like with the same flavors type of steak or chicken. Um, you could even use tofu. You could leave the um, meat off altogether. You could maybe do chickpeas. So there's a lot of options for different ways that you could enjoy it. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do get it started now because um, it takes a little bit of time, but I'm going to make sushi rice. So when you're getting, when you're buying sushi rice, it is a short grain rice, but it's not the same thing as arborio, which is what you would use for um, risotto. So you want to find sushi rice. And one of the really important steps is you have to rinse it really well. So um, the recipe on my site will tell you how to make the rice on the stove top, but I've since found a method that I really like doing it in the Instant Pot. It's just kind of easier. Um, so if you were doing it on the stove top, just kind of follow the directions. Um, like on the back here, it has sushi rice, how to cook it, and it'll tell you for how long, how long you need to let it rest, and then you sprinkle it with... Um, seasoned rice vinegar. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse two cups of short grain rice, the sushi rice, under cold water just to get all of the extra starch off. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. And this is great for like if you're making sushi rolls at home too, or can I fit two cups in here? Let's see. My strainer is kind of small. Yeah. All right, so you really want to rinse it well under cold water. You could do it for like a minute or two. You really want to get all the starch off. Hi, Amy and Julia. How are you guys? Oh, and Julia, yes, Labor Day. We'll be there. Um, so I'm just kind of moving it around a little bit to get the extra starch off. It would be smart to do this in a larger strainer. I just don't have one. I don't really have room. But you really want to get all that starch off. Um, and it, it'll help make it sticky because, you know, when you have sushi, the rice kind of is, you can grab pieces of it and it sticks together. So that's what you're looking for here. Um, so I'm going to put this into my Instant Pot. And again, you can do this on the stovetop. Kind of strain it there. So two cups of rinsed sushi rice and two cups of water, cold water. I, you always want to put cold water in um, when you're using an Instant Pot because if it's warm, it might uh, affect how long it takes to come up to pressure because it's already kind of gotten a, a head start by being pre-warmed. So I'm going to put this in, let's see, water ice, low pressure for 12 minutes, and then when it's done, I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. So... This is, I got the new, a newer model Instant Pot. I won it on an Instagram giveaway, but, so pressure cook, uh, low for 12 minutes. So let's see. The top, this has like a scrolly wheel. It's different than my old one. I'm still getting used to it, and I haven't yet tried 
um, searing in it. There we go. Whoa. Nope. Okay. Start. All right. I haven't tried searing in it yet, so I can't say if I like it better than the old model or not. But we, I will definitely report back. Also, my, um, my website turned 13 yesterday, so it's like a teenager now. And I did a post about 13 things that I've learned over my 13 years of food blogging. So it's not something I was thought I was going to write about, but I surveyed you guys and everybody seemed very interested. So that's up. It's a long post because there's, you know, quite a bit there. But um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, and so basically this poke bowl is going to be marinated. Um, I'm using salmon. A lot of poke bowls use tuna. I'm just going to grab um, the salmon from the fridge. When you're buying fish that you want to use for raw preparations, you want to find one that says sashimi. I got this from H Mart. It's like a Korean market out here, and um, this one's in Hartsdale. So you want to find one that says sashimi or sushi grade. Some stores, like Whole Foods, they'll have it sometimes in the freezer section. It's, it's frozen, so you would just, when you want to make it, put it in the fridge overnight and then use it the next day. Because basically, anything that's sushi grade has already been frozen. And then they thought, because freezing it will keep any sort of, like, funky bacteria or anything from being able to grow. So that's a really important step. So you don't want to just buy a salmon filet and eat it raw. It's, it might be okay, but it very likely might not. So um, I want to get the salmon marinating. Normally I would marinate it for about an hour, but for today I'm just going to do as long as I can. So I'm going to do in a small bowl a quarter cup of tamari which is just, um, it's like a stronger, saltier soy sauce. So you could use regular soy sauce if you want, but it's just, uh, it's usually for sale right next to the regular soy sauce. So a quarter cup of this. Let me know if you guys have any questions, by the way. Um, happy to answer. It doesn't have to be related to this recipe necessarily. It could be about blogging about my weekend, about the 10 course birthday dinner I had on Monday. My birthday was Tuesday, so Monday I had this like incredible meal at uh, Brothers Fish and Chips. They teamed up with Mariachi Mexico and um, Armonk. It was incredible. Um, highly recommend. I love H Mart. That's my go-to for okra. Yes, they, they, always, they have the best produce. I posted a bunch of stuff on Instagram yesterday. Their produce is always like so beautiful. So into the tamari, I'm going to add two tablespoons of honey. Take my measuring spoon back. Yes. Um, there's a trick for honey when you're measuring it out. If you have to put, actually, do I need a tablespoon of oil per chance? Two teaspoons. All right. If you have to do honey in a measuring spoon or measuring cup, if you just spray it with a little oil or cooking spray, or if you have like the same measurement that you need to use of um, an oil, measure the oil first, and that'll help it like not stick to the uh, measuring spoon. So measuring this out. It just transferred my honey into this little pot. It's a, I always thought it was Le Creuset, but I was at the outlet a couple weeks ago and Delaware, and it was, they had a thing there that showed you how to pronounce it, and it says L-U-H, La Cruze. So if they say that's how you pronounce it, I guess that's how, how you pronounce it, but um, I had asked for this little honey pot kind of thing for um, my birthday. My mom got it for me, and I think it's pretty adorable. It'll be nice on some cheese boards, because you guys know I love a good cheese board. All right, so honey, tamari, a tablespoon of seasoned rice vinegar. So usually I use unseasoned vinegars and oils and stuff. Is H Smart your durian source? I've never tried durian, but they do have it. Um, I'm a little afraid of durian, not going to lie. So you want to use seasoned rice vinegar 
for sushi and sushi rice because um, it adds the flavor. It'll taste like sushi. I don't know. When I use when I use um, rice vinegar and other applications, I usually just do um, unseasoned, and I add my own seasonings. But it's kind of key for this. And again, you can usually find this right by the soy sauce. So I've got a tablespoon of that. I'm going to use two teaspoons of sesame oil. I didn't specify, but I think I'll go back and edit this. But um, I usually get toasted sesame oil. I should be afraid of durian. Yeah, it's like, so if you're not familiar with durian, I believe it's a fruit. And it smells, apparently it tastes good. I have some friends who are like, raw vegans who enjoy it, but apparently the smell is so potent and vile that you cannot board a plane with it, like, if you're in a country that grows it or whatever. Um, Keith wants to know if you're going to deliver this to us when you're done. Um, how much is it worth to you? <laughs> um, me and Dina are going to eat it. I don't know how much is going to be left. This is going to be our lunch today, but another time for sure. Two tables, oh, sorry, two teaspoons of chili garlic sauce. Pretty much most of the things in this recipe you can get from that like Asian food aisle. And this is another reason why I love having the double-ended measuring spoons because the side is all funky from the sesame oil and I don't have to dip it into this, but it's just something I kind of get used to. And then two tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. I keep mine in the freezer. I, I can't even tell you how long I've had this this like knob of ginger, but um, you keep it in there and it stays fresh a lot longer. You can peel the skin off if you want. You can use a spoon. I usually don't even bother because it's just two tablespoons. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of ginger. I'm just using a microplane to kind of grate it into here. And so all this stuff is just... Um, it's just flavoring the salmon. So after this, I'm just going to add in some thinly sliced green onions. And then I'm going to cube the salmon, toss it in here, and just put it all in the refrigerator. Ideally, you would want to do this for an hour. You can let it sit in there for longer than that if you want. You can totally make it ahead. You can cut all your veggies ahead of time. If you can hear my Instant Pot is... Uh, screaming a little bit. It's like the steam is building, so it's almost up to pressure. And then it'll only go for 12 minutes, and then I'll let it sit for 10 before I open it up. All right, so this is all you need for your salmon marinade. And just kind of, it's not, it's not that much stuff, but it's got a lot of flavor. So you just want to whisk it together, mostly to get the honey broken up. And then I'm going to cut up the fish. So again, this is sashimi style. It smells like death, but it tastes OK. Yeah, you know, I hear a lot of people make ice cream out of durian, because apparently the texture is really great. But I don't know. There are not many things I haven't tried food-wise. Like, I've eaten some odd things over the years. But um, that's one that I really haven't. That beep is just letting me know that it came to pressure. I will say on this model, I do like, it shows you like a little kind of a, like a graph on the cooking process. So you know like how, what at what point in the process it, it's cooking. Cause the other one that I have is like, uh, yeah, you just kind of trust it. All right, so this piece of salmon is really, really nice. Um, you want to feel, I'm sorry for, my mom hates seafood, so sorry, mom, look away. Um, you want to feel if there's any pin bones, because they usually get them all out, but they don't always. So if you feel any little bones, you'll want to use um, little pliers, tweezers, whatever you, whatever you have in your kitchen that's for food to, um, to pull them out. They're really easy to pull out, and I used to use, actually, like, hardware store needle nose pliers, but... Um, See if I can find the ones that I, the clean ones that I didn't use on, like, hardware stuff. But now I use, if I can find it, here we go. 
go. These guys, they're really good. I can add them to my Amazon shop, but it's like these little, it's like a giant like eyebrow tweezer kind of because it's completely flat right here. So you can really get in on the pin bones. And so if you have your salmon and there's a little ephila bone, you just use this to grab the bone and you pull it and it'll pop, it'll like pull right out. So, cause eating pin bones is, ugh, can be traumatic. So I'm just gonna cut this. Did I give a size? You just want this, them all to be kind of the same. I do about like half inch chunks. And again, since this is sashimi, sushi grade tuna, uh, salmon, you can eat it just like this. You don't need to do anything. And you could also do this and use the um, sushi rice to make rolls if you wanted uh, with the salmon. You don't have to make bowls. I just... It's nice, you don't have to spend the time trying to roll them. Um, but my son loves seaweed, so I think we might try making sushi together sometime soon, especially I'll have leftover sushi rice now. So just as you cut it, just put it right into the marinade. And you can use any type of veggies you want. You can also change the type of fish, as, again, as long as it's sushi grade. Um, I would think Tuna would be nice here. Um, scallops would be really nice. If you've never had scallop sushi and you're into scallops, it's like they're just so, I feel like luscious is the right word for them. They're really, really tender and delicious. Um, so I think that would be good. You could also do like tofu. It wouldn't really be, I don't know if you would consider it. So like food police would come and say that's not technically a poke bowl because it's, uh, not fish, but I think it's perfectly fine to do whatever you want with it, so long as it's something that you'll enjoy. And again, you could um, you could sear some regular salmon and cook it however you like it cooked, and take the marinade. And instead of using it as a marinade, you could kind of cook it down in a saucepan to make like a glaze. And drizzle that over at the end. That would be nice. All right. So, then all you have to do is stir it up and put it in the fridge. Um, put a lid on it if you're going to leave it for a while. I'm going to be using it pretty soon. But So that just will help all the flavors get into the fish. And you want to keep it cold, so especially if you're not going to eat it right away. Definitely refrigerate it. All right, let me just clean this up quickly. Um, oh, I also, I revived a, uh, had to track it down. There's a video, like the first video I ever, anything on video I ever did related to my food site. Um, I did an interview with Brazilian export company or something at the uh, fancy food show in New York City a couple summers ago. And I found it and uh, I added that to my YouTube channel. It's kind of interesting. Hi, Trina. If you went with cooked, would you roast sear the filet and cut or cut first and then cook a stir fry recipe method? Um, I would probably just pan sear it like a whole filet, maybe in the slightly smaller pieces, and then just put it on top of the bowl. You could. Um, you could kind of, you know how like you could like break it apart into some kind of bigger chunks after it's cooked? Like kind of flake it? I think that would be nice too. You could also totally use like canned tuna or canned like cooked um, salmon. Like that would, I think that would work. So for the rice, the other thing we need to do when it comes off, you season it or when it's done, you season it with uh, the seasoned rice wine vinegar, but you also melt um, you combine vinegar, oh, white wine vinegar too. I forgot about that. Let me grab that. So I'm just going to microwave together in here, I guess. So a quarter cup of white wine vinegar and a quarter cup of seasoned rice wine vinegar. It's different than seasoned rice wine. Sorry, seasoned rice vinegar. I'm sorry if I said rice wine vinegar. 
um, seasoned rice vinegar. Quarter. So a quarter cup of each of those. And then also one and a half teaspoons of salt and two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Wrong one. Uh, so I'll put these in here. Get my sugar out. So this is what makes, when you've had sushi rice, what makes it taste like kind of sweet is because there's actual sugar in it. And two tablespoons of sugar. It's probably why my son likes it so much. So I'm just going to microwave it. You could totally do it in a saucepan also. Um, whatever. Whatever method you prefer. I know some people don't like using microwaves at all. I find it handy, but if I already had like needed the saucepan for something else, maybe I would do that. So I'll just let it cook for a little bit to dissolve and then stir it up to make sure that the sugar is actually dissolving. And usually if I'm microwaving something like this or like when I'm softening butter, I'll stop it every 15 to 30 seconds just to make sure it doesn't start like exploding in there. Just give it a little stir and just kind of keep going until you don't see the white grains of sugar and salt anymore. Um, this would also be good, again, different, it's, it would make it different than a typical poke bowl, but if you did like roasted veggies or grilled veggies that you then had either left over in the fridge or just kind of cooled, um, do like a vegetarian thing. There's a, there's a Italian restaurant in my town that has the best grilled, it's just like a side of grilled vegetables and they give you a little dipping, like a cup of balsamic, marin like a balsamic oil thing and uh, you dip it in there and it's so good. They're cold. There's like roasted peppers and grilled eggplant and sweet potatoes and zucchini. It's just like, it's really nice. And sometimes like none of the dishes, some of the dishes are a little heavy and they don't come with anything veggie like. So I kind of like doing that too. So the other thing you can do when making this that'll make it much easier on you is to go to your local sushi restaurant, Japanese restaurant, and just ask for some, like to buy a thing of sushi rice. Then you can just come home and that's it. Like you don't have to worry about cooking it. It's not hard. It just it takes a little time. And if you were trying to go for like a no cook thing, that would help. So you can see there's like a couple little grains of, of sugar in there still. So I'm going to let it go just another maybe 20 seconds. Always interesting when it smells like vinegar in the house. <laughs> All right. Um, what else did I? Oh, you do have to also cool the rice for this. Hot sushi rice is delicious, but um, if it's hot underneath the uh, the cold salmon, it'll kind of change the flavor and texture of it. All right. So that's. Totally dissolved now. I'm just gonna set it off to the side until my rice is ready. All right, so now you can start prepping whatever veggies you're gonna add. So, what do I like to do in here? Oh, I do like making a spicy mayo. So I do about a quarter cup and plus two tablespoons of mayo. It does not have to be exact at all. Um, just mix that in. And I just add in, um, I usually do about two tablespoons of sriracha. If you don't like things spicy, omit it. If you like them spicier, you could add more. I actually think that um, 
that uh, crunchy garlic topping. I've showed you guys before. I just picked some up yesterday again at H Mart because we ran out. This stuff, crunchy garlic topping, would be really nice on top of this bowl at the end too. It would add a little texture. Oh, I forgot to put my uh, green onions in with the salmon. All right. I'll cut those in a minute and stir them in. So just kind of mixing that together. My son actually really likes this. He likes spicy tuna, spicy salmon a lot. Um, but some places make it a little spicier than others. So this is a nice way to be able to control it. You get this kind of nice, like light orangey pink sauce. So that's all that is. This stops, so I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. So that's when I'll open it up. And let me cut up some green onions because I forgot to add them. So like four green onions. Had somebody recently asking about the difference between green onions and scallions. They're the same thing. Um, there's also spring onions that you can find sometimes in like a Latin market or an Asian market and they look kind of like a green onion but there's more of a bulb at the end and those are really great especially um, if you're grilling. Sorry, I realized I'm blocking blocking my cutting board here. All right. Those are they're really nice grilled. Um, so our regular green onions, they're just a little small so it's a little tricky to have them not fall through the grates. It's kind of thinly slice. You can save a couple for the topping at the end if like some of the dark green bits if you want. Man, it smells really good already. All right, so I'm going to save some of this end stuff here and then put the rest in with my salmon. Oh, let's see. There's nothing wrong with using a microwave as a tool. I just don't want to go to a restaurant where I have my meal heated up in one, which has happened. Partially frozen chicken and dumplings from a major restaurant chain. Ew. Um, that sounds like what restaurant chain does chicken and dumplings. I'm going to guess Cracker Barrel, maybe? Um, yeah, I, I my very first job, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts. I was like 14, I think, um, out in Wisconsin. And that's how we made the like breakfast sandwiches back then. I mean, this was a couple years ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just stirring this in. Just imagine you did it earlier. If you forget, that's fine. It just adds a nice bit of color and flavor because we'll be like spooning this right on top of the bowls at the end. I also, when I was working there once, had a woman come in and I realized I forgot to put, they have like those giant coffee filters there and I forgot to put one in when I was brewing the coffee. So I was going to try to scoot out the like basket that held it and she reaches around the counter. She's like, oh no, no, let me help you. And she, it like caught and spilled like molten hot coffee all over my arms. It was wonderful. So it was like, thank you, but no. All right. So the other items that I'm going to put on the bowl, I'm going to do some thinly sliced cucumber, some carrots. I've got um, avocado and some green, like some sprouts. I found radish sprouts yesterday. I, I need to start growing my own again. I just, uh, it's been a little while since I have. With the cucumber, you can keep the peel on or off, whichever you prefer. I, I like the peel. Sometimes my husband prefers it without, so I might peel one of them. Also, these were on sale. They're more expensive out here than where I saw them at H Mart yesterday. They were, well, the sign said three for each, $1.99, but they meant $1.99 for three. It was a really good deal. Um, so I bought, I just bought two because I don't want them to go bad, but they also, they, they were in really good shape. So 
Um, that was nice. Because sometimes they're kind of mushy. I think we were talking about this last week, kind of like the onions. So I'm just doing some thin slices of cucumber. And you can just kind of, you know, while your rice is cooking, you just get all these veggies prepped. And then when it's time to eat, you can just assemble your bowl however you want. You could also use a mandolin for this if you want, or um, to get like really even slices, or you could do the, there's a slicer, a disc for a food processor, that would work too. That would actually probably be the fastest way to do it. So I'm not gonna cut all of this, I'll just do some, but. You can also, if you want it to look like a little bit fancy, you can do, like have you ever seen where they look striped? Um, Cause you can do, you just take a vegetable peeler and you do like, just like leave a little space in between. So you could do like three or four little stripes like that. Do this sometimes for appetizers and then you cut like, give like a little cucumber cup. But so you could do that. And it gives you kind of a little, I don't know. It looks, you know, it could be fun. You could also, you don't have, you could dice them if you want. I just try to go for like some different shapes and colors. Um, Cause I feel like poke bowls are all kind all about the, the prettiness and like the rainbow of colors. All right, so I'm just going to do that many for now. Put this off to the side. All right, so I've got cucumber. Okay, I'm going to do carrots. I was thinking actually this time, um, I usually do matchsticks. With the carrots, um, but I was thinking it might be cool. I'm gonna peel it to just do like shaved little ribbons. Thought that would be pretty. Sometimes I'll do like for my son, I'll give him a vegetable or something in his lunchbox and I'll cut it a couple different ways, and just something about the variety of it makes it feel special to him. And it's like really not much more work on my part to cut something in coins versus sticks or anything, but. So I'm just going to do this so that we get these like thin little ribbons and then you can pile them up and it'll like give you a nice bit of height and stuff too. And when you start getting a little far in the middle, you just kind of pivot it, like rotate it a little bit. Got like two and a half more minutes on the rice before we can start, I'll show you what actually, like how you have to put the seasoning on so that it gets distributed and you wanna do it while the rice is still hot so that it really absorbs. All right, so I'm gonna stop at this many, but the other way I would do it, and I think the way I did it on my post, did I make matchsticks? Mm, yeah, so you kind of, once you get it squared off, you cut a little piece, and then you cut it into thin planks, and you can buy already matchstick cut carrots at the grocery store too, and you just kind of go the other way to cut little, little tiny sticks like that. Um, my knife skills are, all right, hi Roxana. Um, I definitely don't cut exactly the way you're supposed to, but as long as it's pretty consistent, it'll look nice. So that's the other way you could go. Or even you could then take these little matchsticks and line them up and cut across this way and do like a really little itty bitty cubes. Can be cute. So all right, got those done. Um, one of the other toppings that might be different for you guys that I wanted to talk about is this. I believe it's pronounced furikake seasoning. So you know how like with sushi you have seaweed um, that wraps usually nori seaweed. This has um, a combination of stuff inside. It's got, it's 
like a little sprinkle. You can just sprinkle it on rice. It's got seaweed. It's got fish flakes. Um, this one's got sesame seeds. Um, and there's a bunch of different varieties, and they all have kind of different combinations. So if you find yourself at an Asian market, um, you could put these in there. You also could do the little roasted seaweed sheets. Um, just read your blog, grocery post. Congrats on 13 years. Thank you so much, Roxana. Um, I'm going to go grab the seaweeds next so you can see what I'm talking about here. I just bought a bunch of these yesterday because my son loves seaweed in his lunchbox. So they come in multi packs, like this one had, I think, eight. And then you open it up. It's like the fun stuff you find at Asian markets. Um, you can actually find seaweed at a lot of um, regular, like, chain grocery stores here in the U.S. now, too, which is kind of nice. So these, just these little sheets, and they're crispy, and they're really nice snack. They have one of those, like, silica gel packets on the bottom, so make sure if you're giving it to, like, a younger kid that they know that you can't eat that. Um, but you could just, like, arrange those on the bowl if you wanted, or the sprinkle, like I was saying. So I'm going to release whatever pressure is left on this Instant Pot. Um, this one, unlike my old one, it just you push it. The other one, you had to like flip a little kind of lever. So once that's out, I like to drizzle. So you're going to transfer the rice into a bigger dish, and then you slowly add the vinegar mixture and kind of stir it around so that it gets, um, it cools off and absorbs that rice vinegar. All right, so the pressure is released, the button is down, so I can open this up now. Oh, and I will say, if you get an Instant Pot, if you don't have one yet or whatever, when you get one, you need to do a water test on it to make sure it seals properly because when this one arrived, it didn't, and uh, so I couldn't use it. So they, as an apology, they sent me these little mitts to help pick this up, and I, I thought it was, I was like, oh, that's cute. Like, I don't know if I'll actually use them. I actually find it really helpful. So, this is a rice paddle. You can get these in an Asian market also, or they come with an Instant Pot. But if you, or you could just use like a really big spoon. So if you're doing it on the stove top and you don't have this, just use like a really big, like a wooden spoon or a plastic spoon. And you can see like the texture, it's like very sticky. So I'm going to put this into a bowl. Maybe. Running out of counter space here. All right. One moment. i got to reconfigure here a little bit. Don't ever actually use your Instant Pot on a stovetop, it's very dangerous, and I've seen a lot of people have it go very, very wrong. Just a word of warning. You can forget that it's on there and turn a burner on, and then you melt it, and no good. All right, so with this kind of rice, you probably will have some stuck to the bottom. It's all right, just scrape off what you can, and then I just like to soak it in soapy water. It'll help it come off easier. All right. So, basically, we're going to be doing a process of cool, like spreading the rice to cool it and adding the seasoned vinegar. And that's what will make it like sushi rice. So, just want to do like maybe a tablespoon at a time. Drizzle it and then just spread it around. You can kind of like fold like you're making cake batter and cut with the side of your spatula if you want. You could also, they have like really large bamboo things that you spread it out and you can do that um, to help it get thinner. Like use the biggest bowl you can because it'll give it more surface area to cool down and some people will like spread and fan it 
also to help it cool down faster. I found that it's not like, it's not too terrible if you just make sure you move it around a lot. So another tablespoon or so, just stirring it around. And you can always, after like two tablespoons, taste it and see if it tastes like how you like your sushi rice. If it's got enough flavor, you can stop. You could put the rest of this in the fridge if you want and use it next time. You could serve it on the side in case anybody wants a little more. Um, but you can see, oh, it's going to be really hot, but you can see it just really sticky. So I think it could use a little more. I actually got my father-in-law when he was really sick. He was having a hard time eating, and we're trying to help him gain weight. And so sushi rice loaded with, like, car, you know, just carbs. It was a, it was a really good thing for him. Um, and he loved it. And we had gotten him an Instant Pot so he could make it, too. Just made it a lot easier because it sounds like it's intimidating, but it's really not. So, let's see. I'm going to do a tiny bit more. So I probably used like uh, four or five tablespoons. I still have some left. And then I'm just going to set this on the side and periodically um, stir it around a little bit just to kind of keep cooling it. But you can see it really is nice and sticky and it'll hold its form. Ooh, I'm seeing lots of hearts. Let's see. I bought one for a friend's birthday. Did the water test and the valve will seal, but about a minute later, steam comes from the main release valve. Seems like Instant Pot's having QC, QA problems. They actually need customers to test them. Yeah, I had heard some things about the this model that I have, um, especially pertaining to not being able to sear well, which is why I really need to test searing something, because that's one of the things I like most about my other model. I have the Pampered Chef version of a pressure cooker and I love using it for rice. Works better than my rice cooker. Yeah, I used to have a rice cooker too, even though I, I'm perfectly fine with making rice on the stovetop. But uh, it's so easy to just put it in and press a button that says rice, you know? Um, just for the sushi rice, I used a, a timed amount because that way it won't overcook because you don't want it to be like too mushy. All right. You could also, I mean, if you're feeling crazy, you could like set that in a in an ice water bath to try to cool it off more, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. Um, I actually might, I'm going to put some in the fridge. I know this is crazy to do, but just because I'm going to be putting salmon on it in a couple minutes and I don't want it to be hot. So I'm just going to take a little bit, put it in the bottom there. Oh, and let me show you, I'll show you guys another trick I learned a long, long time ago, but if you're ever interested in making like one of those shaped um, rice forms, like if you see it, sometimes it's like a triangle or a cylinder or whatever. All you have to do is you need something that's shaped like that. So say like a measuring cup, just put some water in it to get it wet on the inside and dump it out. And then you take your rice you can do this with regular rice. It doesn't have to be sushi rice. Put it in there and press it. And then you just invert it. And then you have like a shaped, fancily, fancily shaped rice. Um, that's really easy to do. So I'm going to put these in the fridge just so they're ready for when I make my bowl. That's also like doing the shaping like that is kind of nice if you were wanting to do like portion control. Like if you wanna make sure you don't eat a whole cup of rice, you could do half a cup. All right. All right, we're almost done. I agree, but it's nice to have a set, a set and forget the rice while you prepare the rest. Yeah, absolutely. And also like you can leave it when it's done and it'll just sit there and continue to steam. I think it's great. All right. So, I also am going to use avocado, and now I bought avocados yesterday, and they were like fairly ripe, so one of the tricks you can do is a paper bag with ripe bananas, so 
Ooh, these bananas were a lot less speckly last night when I put them in. I can't remember exactly the science behind it, but it's something like uh, bananas like emit a gas maybe that ripens avocados so or peaches. So they're, they're a little bit riper than they were yesterday. So I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit squishier. Um, And then I'm just going to run my knife through the center. Not bad. It's pretty ripe. Um, you can slice it however you want. You can do like the long, come a little closer for you. Go like this. Just be careful that you don't put the tip all the way through because you don't want to cut yourself. You can do like that. And then you just use a spoon, kind of stick it in there and do that. And then you'll have your sliced avocado. Or I could try to do a rose for you guys. It's been a while since I've done an avocado rose, but I'm feeling, feeling festive today. So let's, let's go for it. So let me get this uh, pit is like really in there. Okay. So for an avocado rose, you're going to take your spoon in and along with the, in between the uh, skin and the flesh. And now you're going to want to slice it as thinly as you can. I'm sorry. I know this isn't super close, but I can't really get much closer and have it show up. They release ethylene gas. There's also a theory that you can ripen them by baking. I didn't find success there. Oh, I've seen that too. Like you put it in a low oven. Yeah, I've not tried that, but it sounds like maybe that's a good thing. So you're just doing these really tiny little slices. I'll like that's already like four or five cuts, just really thin. And just like as you put your knife through, kind of press here to keep it down because you want to kind of keep it in one piece. So you just go all the way down the avocado. If it's too, too ripe when you're doing this, it'll just kind of mush and it won't really work. Like I said, it's been a while, so it's entirely possible that this will not turn out, but it's okay. It'll still be tasty. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of scooch it back into place. All right, so you have it all sliced. And then, let me see, I'll turn it this way. You kind of press it into, I don't know if this is going to work. It's like not, mine's like a little too ripe, but not quite ripe enough. You just kind of press it into a longer line, like spread it out. So you're kind of like overlapping all the little pieces, like fanning it a bit. This is a bit of an odd avocado, but okay. And then you, let's see, twist it. Which way should I go? Well, I'll try this way. Kind of twist it and just roll it up. This wasn't the best avocado for that, but it's like a little bit of a rose. Um, you could also do that with mangoes. Mangoes would be really good with this too. All right, the only other toppings are these microgreens. So this one says cut with scissors as needed and then you keep them refrigerated. You could use any type of little microgreens you like. You could also just use like cilantro um, or just the green onions. I just kind of like the color that it gives. So when you buy them like this in a container, there's like a root system down here. So you can kind of take it out in one big chunk. Avocado rose for the win, yep. Um, and you just kind of snip them. You got a little pile of pretty microgreens. The radish ones are a little spicy. Um, 
the probably some of the most known ones are alfalfa sprouts. There's also broccoli sprouts. There's all sorts of sprouts. I, I did a post on growing your own sprouts um, a couple years ago, if you're interested. Um, that's on my website, and it gives you like the whole rundown of you know growing them in a jar versus a vertical grower and all these different methods. It's pretty great. Um, all right, now we're going to assemble. I think, did I miss anything? I don't think so. All right, so when I wrote this recipe, I said to do half a cup of rice on the bottom, which seems like a much more reasonable amount than a cup. But my husband does intermittent fasting, so he'll probably be pretty hungry for lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and give him the one with the full cup. Get my salmon. It's lucky I don't have a big kitchen, actually, because then I'd have to walk farther to get stuff for you guys. So you can see it's like kind of like the salmon got a little darker. Um, so I'm going to do the rice. I'm going to put, this makes about four servings, so put about a quarter of the salmon on. And a lot of times you'll notice with um, poke bowls, they kind of do like sections. So it'll be like salmon and then a section of the cucumber and then a section of the avocado. Just kind of makes it look, look prettier, I guess. You could mix it all up on top. It'll still be nice and it'll be colorful. I'm just kind of like straining out a bit of that juice when I go to put it on. You can totally drizzle some of that juice over the rice too, but um, it is already seasoned. So... And then I'm going to add on the carrots. I think I really like these ribbons. It's a little pile. Okay, got some cucumber. I like to alternate the colors when I like the the salmon is kind of close in color to the carrots so I don't put them right next to each other just kind of looks a little prettier in my opinion but do it however you like you can also put whatever veggies you like daikon would be really nice on here like stuff that's kind of crunchy is nice especially with because the, the avocado and the fish are you know soft so it's kind of nice to add something like that I'm going to do, I think the rose will fit better on mine than my husband's bowl. Maybe I'll put that right on the top, actually. They're a little tricky to move. And like I said, you can make most of this stuff in advance and then just assemble at the very end. Just don't cut your avocado until you're ready to use it. But if you have, like, half an avocado and you want to save the other half for later, use the side that has the pit out. Keep the side that has the pit in, and you can just rub like a little bit of olive oil on the open, um, the open side of the avocado around the pit and put it in the fridge in like a bag, I'd, a plastic bag or a stasher bag or like wax paper, and that'll keep it for a couple days. Do some sprouts. And I have some green onions. I'll put kind of over everything. Oh, there's my matchstick carrots. Okay, and am I forgetting anything else except the furikake, I think? This little, little sprinkle. So just all over the top. And then you could also, like I know my husband enjoys seaweed, so I could do like a little extra pieces of seaweed back there. And is that it? Did I get everything? That's it. So here's one spicy salmon poke bowl. Oh, I know what I forgot. The sauce. Gotta get that like little spicy drizzle on everything. You can use as much or as little as you like. We really dig the spicy sauce in my house, so. So there it is. It's really, it looks really impressive, but it's not that hard to make. You just have to have a little patience with the rice. So 
There you go. Um, if you make this recipe, I would love to see it. Tag me at Big Flavors on um, social media or at Big Flavors blog on Twitter. Um, hi, Charlie. Um, if you make it, you want to use hashtag Cook Big Flavors. I love sharing what other people are making of my recipes and looks really awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so glad you approve and I will be enjoying this for lunch now. So I hope everybody has a great week. Let's eat. Yeah, Charlie, hop on over. I know it'll take you how long to get here. I'll pop it in the fridge. Um, I'll see you next week. I don't know yet what I'll be making next week. If anybody has any um, suggestions, something that doesn't take a lot of oven time because it doesn't really work for live and also it's hot. <laughs> so um, let me know. I did, I did come up with a new method for roasting beets. I've been doing it in the slow cooker for a while. That takes hours. I figured out a really nice way to do it in the Instant Pot. So if that's of interest, I can always show you how to do that. And uh, 12 hours. All right, Charlie, I will see you in 12 hours. Um, all right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.